Well, I messed up again. And I got the time messed up on my live stream. <clears throat> hey there, Terrell. Are you able to hear me okay? Should be able to. Yep. Well, I'll wait for a few more. We'll wait for a few more and see if they uh, show up since I messed up the time. I meant for it to be 6.30 uh, Central Time. And uh, my problem is this. I work, um, I drive 100 miles a day to work, and I work in the Eastern Time Zone. But I live in the Central Time Zone. And um, um, I live on Central Time. People ask me how I do it. I just kind of ignore Eastern Time Zone. So I'm always an hour behind everything. Sometimes I miss meetings at work because uh, of the central time zone, eastern time zone thing. They'll put post a meeting, and what happens is my tablet or my Outlook on my computer will pick it up. So today, when I set this live stream up, I was sitting over um, <coughs> at work in the eastern time zone. So I didn't, I don't recognize that they, they let you choose a time zone. They may, I just didn't pick it up. So anyways, I'm an hour late to the party. Hey, Tim, Greg. So what I decided to do, I haven't done a live stream for a couple of weeks. So uh, what I decided to do tonight was I'm getting ready to leave uh, tomorrow early. Tomorrow morning is Friday, um, the 12th of April. This is my annual spring trek over to Cades Cove. So... Um, I'm going to stay over there for uh, three nights and four days, and I basically am going strictly for um, wildlife photography. And I've got a plan, I've got a game plan, and it doesn't include driving around in a car all day long, okay? So I thought it would be helpful. Um, I've had people ask me before about my gear, what I take with me, and yesterday uh, Tim Childers and I went out hiking uh, together. Uh, we did some urban photography, and I'm going to have a video coming out on that pretty soon. And we did, uh, we went to a waterfall, did some waterfall photography. And I got to thinking about it on the way back. We were talk talking about gear and not taking so much gear with us. I know in the past uh, I've taken, <coughs> excuse me, in the past I've taken a lot of things um, in my backpack that I absolutely did not need. I could have just left it at home. So I thought what I'd do tonight is I'd share with you what I'm going to pack to go to Cades Cove with. Now, I, I said wildlife, okay? And that is my main goal here is wildlife. But I may take one trip on the way home and do some waterfall type photography, which would be on the way out of Cades Cove in an area called Tremont. Now, Tremont is just outside of Townsend, Tennessee. Uh, it's not over by Gatlinburg or anything like that. So that's going to be on Monday when I start back home. So I'm hoping that um, when I do go to Tremont, there will not be a lot of people there on Monday. Now, my goal in Cades Cove is to get out and walk the center part of it. And I've never done this before. And um, I've had some um, uh, advice from another photographer about walking these service roads that are out there. That's what I'm going to try to do. I've got me a little stool, a little hunting stool I'm going to take with me, and I plan on staying out there for a long time. So um, that's my goal this time, um, trying to find some, some good wildlife compositions, coyote, bear, uh, deer, whatever, bobcat, whatever I can find, turkey. Uh, turkeys, turkey season's in right now in Tennessee, so the, 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 tom, uh, the gobblers are... Uh, uh, strutting so I seen one the other day. I just love to watch them do that So I'm going to switch over here to my overhead camera so you can see what I'm talking about Yeah, Greg no <laughs> It does not mean 
<laughs> it does not mean that. So I'll explain, okay, real quick. I get up at four o'clock in the morning, no matter what time zone I'm in, okay? I get up at four o'clock in the morning. I leave my house by 5.15 to get to work by 7.30. Now, it's 5.15 Central Time, 7.30 Eastern Time. I lose an hour driving to work. But when I come home, I get off work at four o'clock and I get home at four o'clock. Now, does that blow your mind or what? But look here, eight months and 20 days, I will not have to worry about that anymore. Right, Tim? <clears throat> Anyways, I'm gonna get started here and I'm gonna switch over to my other camera. And let's see if I can do that real quick. Okay, now um, I've got my Z6 II right above me uh, on a tall tripod and uh, looking down on the table. This is the gear I'm taking, okay? This is it right here. Uh, none of this stuff is. This is my vlogging camera and my computer. I'm, I'm probably going to leave my computer at home also. Uh, this is it. So I'm going to go through it real quick and show you, and then I'm going to put it in the bag back here so you can see that it all fits. Um, I weighed this pack before. I don't know what it's going to weigh today, but I'm going to guess about 30 pounds. So we're going to start off with the, the big one. This is going to be the wildlife rig this weekend. So I'm taking the Z8 with the uh, 180 to 600, and I'm going to take that uh, as my main wildlife rig. Now I have a, a big tripod with a fluid head on it, and that's what I'm going to be using for this. Um, anyways, uh, it looks really big because I got the, the lens hood attached to it. And I'm going to go ahead and stick that in the bag right away. I don't drop it on the floor on live TV. Now when I stick that in there, I've got to turn my tripod collar around, okay? By the way, this bag here is my um, MindShift First Flight um, 30 liter, okay? I've had it quite a while. I like the bag a lot. Uh, they have another one that's similar to this now that's um, a back. I think you call it backlight, which means it opens on the opposite side. This is traditional. Uh, this op you, you put this on your back and it opens traditionally out the back like it normally would. You don't have to take it off uh, and turn it upside down and all that on the ground. Anyways, I put the Z6, uh, yeah, I put the Z8 in the bag with the 180-600. I'm taking my, as my second body, okay, I'm taking the Nikon D200. Now, don't think I'm crazy, okay, but I just love this camera. I could have took the D500, but I have chose to leave the D500 and the 500PF uh, at the house. Thanks, Tim. Great. Yep, I'm glad. I'm using the 14 to 30 on the Z62 for that camera angle. Anyways, um, I'm taking the D200 and uh, just one battery for it. And I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do with this, but um, I tell you the two lenses I'm taking that go with this camera. I'm taking a 24 millimeter uh, 2.8D lens, okay, for this. And I'm taking a 50 millimeter 1.8 um, lens. Now, the beauty of these lenses, they're full frame, okay? They're autofocus on the D200. But they not, I could use them on the Z8, but they're not autofocus. So to facilitate that, I'm taking the FTZ adapter with me. So I'm going to put the D200 in here. Now let me give you a tip about packing your bag. Hold on one second. I need to close my door before my wife comes in here and yells at me. She tells me I get loud in here. Anyways, um, one of the good things about what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave the lenses off the body. And here's a tip. If you can travel that way and take the lenses off your body, your gear will fit a lot more neater in your backpack because you can put these camera bodies in a side pouch. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to put the D200. I'm going to remove one of these, one of these dividers real quick. And I'm going to slide him right down here in this side pouch. And what I'm going to do right next to it, okay, the D200. When I get down, I'll show you a close-up picture of this bag, what it looks like when it's all packed up. Isn't this fun? 
So I'm going to go ahead and stick my uh, 50 millimeter next to it. And these lenses are so small, okay, that I can put them one right on top of each other. And they're lightweight. They won't hurt a thing, okay? So I got both of those in there and the D200 right next to it, okay? So it doesn't leave me with a lot of gear here. I'm, I'm, I'm running out of space. In addition to uh, the Z-mount lens of the 180 to 600, I am taking the um, 24 to 120, and mainly for landscape type photography if I run into anything. So I'm going to take that with me, and I'm going to find a place for it. Looks like it'll fit right there next to the D200. And this is one I'm debating on, okay? This is my 105 macro um, f mount 2.8 g vr lens i've had this thing forever now this is wildflower season and if i go hiking up in tremont i'm probably going to want this lens so i'm going to take this lens with me okay and i'm going to go ahead and put that in the bag find me a spot right over here and then we're getting down to the nitty gritty here, okay? One of the biggest important things that you need to have if you're going to be a wildlife photographer is you need a good set of binoculars, okay? Now, I spent a little money on these. These are Nikon uh, Pro Staff 7S. I got the camouflage ones. They come in black too. And I just got me my Nikon Z8 uh, strap and put it on here so I can carry these with me in the field. Binoculars are very important, especially if you're looking at a great distance. Don't use your camera as a binocular. It don't work. Use these, okay? Uh, so I carry these with me too, and I've got to find a place for them. So it looks like they're going to be right up here in this spot right here. Just like that. So I've got another divider. Now, it leaves me with my camera strap, okay? Uh, my rocket blower, my filter pouches, my batteries, my FTZ adapter, and a remote cable release, okay, for the Z8. Um, in fact, the nice thing about this remote cable release, it'll work for both the Z8 and the D200. They both use a 10-pin um, adapter on it. So now I've got to get the rest of this in the bag. So um, what I'm going to do is find me a place over here. This corner right here is usually where I put my rain cover for my backpack, but the weatherman says it's not going to rain this weekend, so I'm not taking my rain cover. I'll put my filter pouch in there. This is another filter pouch I have. These are 77 millimeter, uh, and these right here are for um, the 24 to 120, okay, just in case I get into a landscape situation. They are going to fit right here below the 180 to 600 lens, just, right, just like that. Then I need to put the FTZ adapter in there. So I think what I'm going to do is put that in this back pouch over here. Then I got to get the rocket blower in there. So I'll put that on top of the camera right here. Rocket blower is very important. You need to have one, buy one, buy the big one. Uh, they have a small one. This is a big one. I don't know what they call it, but uh, I got it from B&H. Okay. Uh, you can get them off of Amazon. Make sure you get the rocket blower brand. Put that right there in the pack. Now my uh, remote shutter release, I'm going to put in the lid of the pack right here. And zip that up. Actually, I'm going to, and now I'm going to put the batteries at the top of the pack right up here. And I've got some on the charger right now, but I've got two One's in the camera charged. Uh, I've got these two that are charged, and I got one more in the charger, which is four batteries for the Z8. And believe me, the Z8 needs the batteries. Now, I got an assortment here of microfiber cloths. Make sure you take some with you, okay? I'm going to also stick those in the zipper pouch up here somewhere. I just kind of cram them on in there somewhere. This, this particular backpack has three uh, zipper pouch areas on the lid. 
And then I got a set of lens caps here for the, um, for the Z8. One's for the lens, one's for the body. I'm going to take them with me as an extra set because I may take the uh, lens off the um, body separately. I don't know. I'm just taking them with me in case I need them. So I'm going to put those in the zipper pouch also next to the batteries, I think. And then the last thing I need to take is I need to take a battery charger, at least one. Um, I've got um, three, okay? That's one thing good about um, the cameras I have, the Z8, um, the D500, and the Z6 II, they all use the same battery charger. So I have three of these things. So I'm going to put one of these in there, and I'm going to stick them over here. What's in this pouch? I'm going, to stick them on, I'm going to stick this battery charger on top of the FTZ adapter, right like that, okay? And basically, the only thing I got left is my camera strap. And I can tuck that in anywhere I like inside this bag, okay? So I'm going to leave it out just for a second. I'll put it right on my binoculars. Let's do that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this bag over here to the table so you can actually see what it looks like packed. Okay. Don't have enough tables. Okay. But right there, okay, let me turn it around because that flap's going to hit the keyboard of my computer. So right there, okay, is everything that I am taking this weekend, okay, to do wildlife and um, landscape photography, mainly wildlife, okay. Uh, it fits in there pretty well. It's a little bit bloated and, you know, um, I could make this worse. I could take another backpack. I have a smaller um, low pro that I use sometimes to transport the D500 and the 500 PF. But here's my experience, okay? I've been to Cades Cove a lot. I go at least twice, maybe three times a year. Last year I went four times. I always take too much gear. And I said to myself after hiking with Tim yesterday, I said, I'm not gonna do it. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to cut my pack down so I don't have to try to keep up with lens caps and everything else when I'm when I'm out there trying to do photography. So this is what I'm going to take with me to Cades Cove, and I just wanted y'all to see that. And I'm going to look here at the comments and see if we got any questions. Yes, Terrell, I'm trusting the weatherman. <laughs> I sure am. Uh, a missile blower. Well, I don't know if you call that a missile blower. Um, uh, I don't know if you call that a missile blower. <laughs> That's what it looks like, though. It looks like a rocket. That's why they call it a, ro uh, a rocket uh, blower, okay? This is the big one, and I've got a smaller one I used to use. That was what I started out with, and this one here puts out... A lot more air okay and I have this with me to blow off lenses and just get dust off of things and uh, I try not to touch my um, that's why I have my microfiber cloth with me uh, up here is I try not to touch my lenses um, if I get water drops on them or something like that then um, you know I blow it off and somebody's trying to call me on my phone but I'm not going to answer it Anyways, there's my backpack. Now, if you just wait one second, I'm going to go weigh it, okay? And I'm going to go in here and get my scales, okay, that I have. And just going to get my regular old bathroom scales, okay? And I'm going to step on them, just me, okay? Now, y'all don't make fun of me.
Okay, me fully dressed. I'm stepping on the scales. It says I weigh 241.8 pounds. Now, I'm going to put the backpack on my back, okay, and step on the scales and show you how much it weighs. Anybody want to take a guess? Let me see something here. There we go. Now I'm going to step on the scales. Okay, with the backpack. 265.8. So how much is that? I was 241.8. With the backpack, I'm 265.8. I'm going to let you all do the math. I think it's about 20... Was it about 25 pounds, maybe? Not sure. Twenty-one pounds. Okay, that to me is pretty good because let me tell you something. I've had that pack loaded down before, and uh I think it weighed like 25 pounds, something like that. Might have been more than that. Anyways, uh 21 pounds is acceptable. I don't know how I could trim it off some. Now, am I going to carry that pack? Um, no, I'm not going to be carrying that pack full up 21 pounds. This is my transportation pack. When I go out to do wildlife uh, shooting, I'll just take my Z8 and the 180 to 600. Okay. Now, in addition to the pack, I have a few other things that I have to take. Tripods. Okay. <clears throat> I have two different tripods that I travel with. I only use one at a time, obviously. But uh, the first one that I like, this is my favorite, right now my favorite tripod right here. This is the Leofoto LS324C carbon fiber tripod. It has an Acrotec GP ball head on it, which is about six years old. This ball head is really cool, okay? You cannot, this ball head will not mess up on you. You can put it under water in the kitchen to clean it off, and it's all open here, okay? It's all composite. I don't know what it is, if it's some kind of composite, but it's strong. I've never had it give me a problem. It's really a good ball head. They're not cheap. They're about $500 for an Acrotec. Anyways, I love this Leo Photo uh, LS324C. Uh, it's a good carbon fiber tripod. I use it a lot for my landscape stuff. For my wildlife stuff, I use a Robus 5570, uh, which is, it'll go up to like, I don't know, 72 inches or 82 inches. It's tall. And it's got, I, I use two different ball heads on that. I'll use a, a BH, a really right stuff, uh, BH55. And then I have a Manfrotto um, fluid head that I use, and um, I use the Manfrotto fluid head a lot because I've been doing a lot of video with it. But this is my um, BH55, uh, really right stuff, ball head. Now this thing here is a hoss, okay? It's big, but it's solid as a rock. So I started out with this, and um, I'm probably gonna throw this in the truck because this is the first time that I've taken the um, um, first time I've taken the uh, fluid head out to do wildlife photography, and I don't want to get messed up. Uh, let's see here, Tim. Ch oh, twenty-four pounds. Okay. Um, Terrell, I'll be in Gatlinburg next month. We'll be doing Kate's Cove, Cherokee. Hoping to see elk at Oconalofti. Yeah, I would say you will see elk at Oconalofti Terrell. Um, I heard I heard some people with some some family members were over there. <laughs> you will have less weight when you take off your microphone. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, I got this ball head, and that's when I'm. Those are the tripods I'm taking.
Now, um, one thing I want to address here, I am camping. Um, some of you may know, some of you may not know, I did buy a used 16-foot camper. Um, it's, I'm doing some work to it. Um, I'm, I'm putting solar on it and doing some other things, and the roof, uh, the top of the roof needs some attention. It's not leaking, but before I take it out, uh, I want to go ahead and seal that roof back up again. So I am camping in the back of the truck uh, this weekend, which I've done several times over in Cades Cove. So um, one of the things I got to keep in mind here is I don't have any power. When you go to Cades Cove or any of the Smoky Mountain National Parks, there's three of them, uh, actually four of them. There's uh, Cades Cove, Elkmont, Smokemont, and Cataloochee. When you go to those parks, there are no facilities. They have a bathhouse with a bathroom and a, and a sink, no showers, no hot water, no electricity at the campsites, and no water hookups, okay? You can get water from the bathhouse. They have a, a sink outside where you can wash dishes and stuff, a great big uh, laundry sink type thing. So it's pretty primitive as far as that goes. So I have a 300 um, watt hour battery pack made by WattFun, and I bought that a couple years ago, and um, I use that to charge things. Uh, it has a, a light on the front of it, and I charge my camera batteries with it and uh, things like that. It will not run anything power hungry. I couldn't, I couldn't cook with it. Uh, I couldn't run an electric fan with it very long. But I do have a solar panel to charge it back up. And you just plug it in, set the solar panel out. And it takes about two, three hours for it to charge back up. You can do that while you're, you know, sitting there relaxing in the, in the afternoon or whatever. So that's how I get my battery. Uh, my batteries for my camera charged up. So everybody knows one of the things with the Z8 is it does chew through those batteries and um, that's kind of an issue with that. So that's important to take something uh, that you can charge your batteries if you don't have electricity at your campsite. And being down in Cades Cove, uh, it's about eight miles back down the road to Townsend to get close to anything civilized. So uh, you're pretty much self-contained if you're staying in the cove. And that's just the way I like it, really. So anyways, I wanted to show you this setup. What kind of camera, Terrell? Terrell says he hopes to have a new camera by then. Be interested in hearing what he's getting. Um, I love my Z8. Okay, that's probably been one of the better purchases I've made in a long time. And um, I didn't use it. Uh, I didn't use it yesterday. I left it at home. I took the Z62 and the uh, 24 to 120 and the 14 to 30. I used the 24 to 120 on the urban stuff, and then I used the 14 to 30 down at the waterfall. And I had a very small bag yesterday. Let me show it to you. Uh, I purchased this messenger type bag. Um, Tim got to see it firsthand yesterday. But this is this is the bag. This is the bag I took with me yesterday. Okay, this is a uh, Think Tank um, mirrorless mover 30i. It'll hold a mirrorless camera and one. One extra lens, okay, uh, you can put in there. It's got a pouch over here. You can put some stuff in it, batteries. Let me get that camera so you can see it. Batteries and stuff. Uh, it's got some zipper pouches here. I had it pretty much loaded up. You open this flap right here, and there's another zipper pouch. I had microphones and everything in here. It also comes with its own rain cover right here. See that? Pretty cool. Anyways, I would like to use this bag more often for, well, just walking around. I used it yesterday. I didn't miss my big backpack. I carried this with me yesterday. And um, I just carried my, my tripod. I used the Leo Photo one. I just carried it in, the, um, in my hand while I carried this on my shoulder. I just kind of 
did it like this where you straddle across your shoulder like that and then it was down here then this i just carried by hand down the trail and that's the way i did it so i was kind of happy with that being minimalist uh equipment um i know i got a lot of gear i don't have as much as i used to have but um i only take certain certain gear with me on long trips terrell says he has a T7 Canon. He's looking for the R7 or the R10. I'm not familiar with Canon. Um, Tim Childers might be able to give you an opinion on the R7 versus the R10. I'm not sure. Um, I know Phil Thatch shoots the R7. I think that's right. Uh, and uh, Isn't that the one that's a crop sensor, 33 megapixel? I believe it is. Uh, he likes it. He's got that 100 to 500 very expensive Canon L mount lens that he uses for bird photography a lot. Yes. And uh, I see that trail. And uh, he uses that a lot. So there's a lot to be said for those crop sensor camera bodies. Um, I'm assuming you have some Canon lenses, Terrell. So you probably want to get a, uh, yeah, you might want to get the uh, adapter. You have the R10. Oh no, the R10 is 24 megapixels. Yeah. There's Tim's chiming in there. He he said he's considered swapping his R for an R7. So I'm st I'm still holding out for Nikon to come out with. Um, hmm, that's a good lens trail. It'd be all right. 150 to 600. Uh, the Canon version. So. I'm not sure if you need an adapter to go into the mirrorless or not. But um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I'm still holding out for Nikon to come out with a, uh, a, a nice uh, mirrorless crop sensor body that will fill the shoes of the uh, D500 being discontinued. Um, I'm still hoping for that. And maybe it'll happen. I don't know. Uh, the Z6 III rumors have kind of diminished a little bit, and I haven't heard a whole lot about it. Uh, I'm on the list. I'm number two at, at the, my favorite camera store, which is Murphy's Camera up in Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you better hurry up and get that new camera so you can get used to using it <laughs> before you come down here in a couple weeks. Um you coming down on your own or are you coming down with, with uh, friends or family? I find that my, my wife, uh, if, she come, if she was to come with me, I'm, I would be so afraid she'd be bored half the time with what I was doing. Well, listen, yeah, that'll be good. I hope you have a good time, Terrell. If you need any uh, advice or uh, assistance with that, um, send me an email um, after the after the live feed at rdphoto3 uh, at gmail.com, and I'll send you my phone number. And if you got questions or something, you need some assistance while you're here, you can text me, and I'll answer you back. Uh, just when you do text me, tell me who you are the first time, because... A lot of times if somebody texts me or calls me, they're not in my contact list. Well, sure you do. You got to go to Dollywood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you'll have fun. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a great place down here. Well, listen, it's uh, 7 o'clock Central Time. Cool. Fourth time there. Well... You're coming at a good time. The bear ought to, the bears ought to be coming out by now. Okay. Anyways, it's seven o'clock central time. I've got to finish packing some stuff and I got to get to bed because I'm leaving about 3 a.m. in the morning because I want to be at the gates to Cades Cove when they open the gates tomorrow. So uh, there'll be some videos uh, coming out of this trip. I'm not too sure how I'm going to do this. Uh, I've done them before. Uh, I, I watched a video today that Tim sent me. They're there, um, it hasn't happened yet, but the uh, 
uh, the Senate, uh, not the Senate, the House of Representatives are moving a bill through it, uh, the United States government, to um, back off of this um, filming ban they got uh, for commercial purposes in the national parks. Well, yeah, you may have seen 17 days and uh, 17 bear, but uh, there may have been some duplicates there. Because <laughs> I I know a lot of people say, well, they've seen three bear over there, and then later they'll see the, 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 the mama and the three babies over here on the other side of the park, and they count that as, as uh, you know, six or seven they've seen. Yeah, Tim, thank you. Anyways, thanks for coming by tonight. I wanted to do this live stream real quick and, and show... Um, show my gear set up and uh listen thanks for coming by and i'll talk to y'all later